Hello, welcome to Criminality, a true crime podcast. Today's episode is part two of the case of R. Kelly. Last time, we left off with a leak of a video depicting the abuse of a girl known to be underage by Kelly. Due to the leak of the video, in June 2002, Kelly was indicted in Chicago on 21 counts of child pornography. That same month, on June 6, 2002, Kelly was arrested by the Miami Police Department on a Chicago arrest warrant at his Florida vacation home. Unfortunately, the alleged victim refused to testify at the trial and a Chicago jury found Kelly not guilty on all counts of child pornography in June 2008. Police investigators from Polk County and Miami-Dade County arrested Kelly on January 22, 2003 at Miami Wyndham Grand Bay Hotel for 12 counts of possession of pornography unrelated to the previous charge, but the charges were dropped due to a lack of probable cause for the search warrants. Even though the media and the public was aware of the serious accusations that had mounted in regards to R. Kelly over the years, 2015 was a real turning point. In 2015, R. Kelly gave the first of his increasingly unhinged interviews where he was seriously asked about the allegations against him in a public platform. He walked out of that interview. I have one more question. Yeah. What do you say to the multiple fans, the many fans who are watching and listening that I say, say there have been fans. multiple accusations my, against you, against young women in Chicago, and they people are concerned are me, about your past that and me, that's impacting them, them from all. purchasing your I love music them all. It doesn't matter who they are. If they hate me, they love me, they want to destroy me, whatever, I love them all. And I love you too. You don't need to give me any of your I love, love, sir. Everybody. You really it don't need to give me your love. I just wanted to ask the question: What do you say to the? What do you say to the fans? Your I'm fans who don't want to you. buy your music. Then, yeah, I'm not going to allow you to do that. But I love you. I love. My okay. Fans. I have I a video everybody. question for you from you a fan. Have if no you video questions for me, because this interview is over. Okay. Well, Mr. All K, right. I, thank you very All much right. for coming to our press. I've not answered answering my questions. Then Jim Derogatis reported for BuzzFeed News on July 17th, 2017 that Kelly was accused by three sets of parents of holding their daughters in an abusive cult. Kelly and the alleged victims denied the allegations. Kelly was again accused of misconduct on April 17, 2018 by a former partner of his who claimed that Kelly intentionally infected her with sexually transmitted disease. In a January 2019 BBC News article, a woman named Asante McGee whom Kelly had met in 2014 and had taken to live with him some months later, said that she lived with not only Kelly, but with other women. She said, he controlled every aspect of my life while I lived with him. McGee later moved out of her own accord. In May 2018, the Women of Color branch of the Time's Up movement called for a boycott of Kelly's music and performances over the many allegations against them. The boycott was accompanied by a social media campaign called Mute R. Kelly. Spotify announced on May 10th, 2018 that it was going to stop promoting or recommending music by Kelly. Two days later, Apple Music and Pandora also announced that they would cease to feature or promote Kelly's music. Spotify ultimately reversed the decision, following initial backlash including that of Top Dog Entertainment, which threatened to remove its musical catalog from streaming service. In early January 2019, Kelly was dropped from RCA Records following the airing of Surviving R. Kelly, which detailed numerous sexual assault allegations against the singer for decades. A number of musicians who collaborated with Kelly expressed regret for working with him, including Celine Dion, Nick Cannon, Chance the Rapper, Lady Gaga, and Jennifer Hudson. In May 2018, the Washington Post reporter Geoff Edgars wrote, the Star Treatment, a lengthy article alleging music industry executives' willful blindness to Kelly's sexually abusive behavior toward underage girls. Former Jive president Barry Weiss told newspapers that during the 20 years with the label, he never concerned himself with Kelly's private life and according to the Post, executives at Epic Records 
also took a similarly relaxed attitude towards allegations of Kelly's sexual misconduct. The Washington Post also suggested the labels were complicit in the sex cult allegations from the previous summer's BuzzFeed piece. Employees at the studios where Kelly recorded were required to sign non-disclosure agreements and not enter certain rooms, which they said they believed were where Kelly made the young women and underage girls stay while he worked. Hilariously, Kelly released the 19 minute long I Admit on SoundCloud on July 23rd, 2018 as a response to his accusers. In the song he admitted to nothing of import. It was a complete troll job. On March 6, 2019, Kelly was interviewed by Gail King wherein Kelly became more and more unhinged as the interview went on, culminating in one of the most infamous outbursts in interview history. Plan. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. Y'all, I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna. This let is the not true. Okay, um. This is. It doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me we're gonna destroy your career. Oh, it's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped. Okay. They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their uh, on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in. Deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Well, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes. What kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart. Because my heart is so big, people betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. On February 22nd, 2019, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in Illinois charged Kelly with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. The charges allege that from 1998 to 2010, Kelly sexually abused four females, three of whom were teen minors at the time, with evidence including a video provided by Michael Avenatti of an alleged new crime. The first grand jury indictment from the Eastern District of New York was handed down June 20th, 2019. On July 11th, 2019, Kelly was arrested on federal charges alleging sex crimes and obstruction of justice. A day later, following his rearrest, federal prosecutors from New York and Chicago indicted Kelly on 18 additional charges. At his bail hearing, Judge Tiscone denied bail on grounds of both dangerousness and flight risk. He was incarcerated at Metropolitan Correctional Center in Chicago from July 11, 2019 to June 23, 2021, where he was transferred to the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. The federal jury trial began on August 18, 2021 with opening statements by prosecution and defense lawyers. The first witness called was Geronda Pierce, one of the subjects of surviving R. Kelly, whose identity was widely known. She was the first of any of Kelly's abusers to have ever testified against them in court. Pace testified that Kelly's abuse included slapping, choking, and raping her. On cross-examination, Pace was asked about signing a statement that she had deceived Kelly about her age and replied that it was a condition of a settlement. In all, 11 witnesses at Kelly's trial accused him of the abuse, either sexual or physical, with some accusing him of both. Two accusers were men, alleging Kelly had sexually abused him as children. One had recruited the other and testified as cooperating witnesses. In addition, eight employees of Kelly's staff testified, corroborating details of Kelly's modus operandi. After a six-week trial, including two days of deliberations, on September 22, 2021, the jury returned a verdict of guilty on all nine counts of the verdict sheet. Judge Donnelly sentenced Kelly to 30 years of imprisonment, admonishing his criminality as calculated and carefully planned 
and regularly executed for almost 25 years. Following Kelly's completion of his prison sentence, Judge Donnelly ordered Kelly to serve five years of supervised release with conditions typical for sex offenders. In addition to prison time, Judge Donnelly levied a $100,000 fine plus a statutory $40,000 penalty. Kelly was reportedly devastated, but will appeal. And there you have it, the tragic story of how everyone looked away while this monster was causing irreparable damage to dozens of women and their families simply because he could sing and make a buck for the labels. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to hear more episodes like this one.